Suppose we have an absolutely convergent series. Let another series have the same terms, but in a different order. Is our new series absolutely convergent? Well, suppose it isn't. Then there is some epsilon where, for any n, there is m greater than n greater than n, where a particular sum is greater than epsilon. Now, the argument after this point may get a little complicated, so it may help to have some concrete, if made up, numbers. So suppose that our epsilon is 0.01, .01, and for any n, we can find m greater than n, where the finite sum is greater than epsilon. Now, since the original series is absolutely convergent, then for this value of epsilon, there is an n star, where for all m greater than n greater than n star, the sum is less than epsilon. So suppose, again, just for concreteness and so we can organize our thinking, that n star is 5. So again, the made-up numbers are not part of our proof. They are there to organize our thinking. And in this case, our ability to make up this number comes from the fact that our original series was assumed to be absolutely convergent. So in the proof, we need to say something like this. Since our original series converges, then for this epsilon, there is some n star, where for m greater than n greater than n star, the finite sum will be less than epsilon. Since the terms of our new series are the same as those of the original series, then the first n star equals 5 terms of our original series are somewhere in the terms of the new series. And since there's a finite number of them, suppose that all of these terms appear in the first, oh, I don't know, 100 or so terms of our new series. Which means that all of the remaining terms must correspond to terms in the original series with index greater than 5. So again, these arbitrary numbers are not part of the proof. The actual statement we'd want to say is that we want to find an n hat, where if our index is greater than n hat, then the term of the rearranged series corresponds to a term of the original series whose index is greater than n star. So remember, we assumed our rearranged series was divergent. So our assumption means that we can find an m and n greater than 100, where some sum will be greater than epsilon. Again, we'll throw down a concrete sum as a placeholder. Now by assumption, these correspond to terms of our original series with index greater than 5, where we'll arrange these in order of increasing index. And so epsilon is less than the sum. But we can fill in the intervening values. And this is a problem because, remember, we assumed our original series was absolutely convergent. And this sum has to be less than epsilon, as long as m and n are greater than 5. And they are. Again, we made up these numbers so we could organize our thinking formally. By assumption, we have m and n greater than n hat, where our sum of the rearranged series is greater than epsilon. But since these terms correspond to terms of the original series with index greater than n star, then we'll take the least and greatest index. And so our sum of the rearranged series is less than a particular sum of the original series. And that has to be false, since our original series is absolutely convergent. And this proves the important theorem. If a series is absolutely convergent, that any rearrangement of the terms is also going to be absolutely convergent. And in fact, we can prove that if the series is absolutely convergent, and we have a rearrangement, then the sum of the two series are the same. But you should prove this.